Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin is the ranking member on the House Oversight Committee. He's back with me. Congressman, I, I often talk to you by virtue of your role as a member of Congress, but today I, I want to sort of uh, talk to you as a lawyer. I, I've got certain questions. That they appear in paragraph 22 of the indictment, uh, in which there are uh, five items that the, uh, that the prosecutors are referring to in which Donald Trump, prior to and while he was president, referred to the handling of classified information. I'm going to read them to you. A, on August 18, 2016, Trump stated, in my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. B, on September 6, 2016, Trump stated, we also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting, protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. C. On September 17, 2016, Trump stated, one of the first things we must do is enforce all classification rules and to enforce all laws relating to the handling of classified information. D. On September 9, 2016, Trump stated, we also need the best protection of classified information. And on November 3, 2016, right before the election, Trump stated, service members here in North Carolina have risked their lives to acquire classified intelligence to protect our country. All right, so Donald Trump... Before he was the president of the United States, seemed to have a fairly keen understanding of classified information and how to handle it. And in fact, he's charged with 31 counts under the Espionage Act, the stuff that actually endangers American lives, those people he was talking to in North Carolina on November 3rd, 2016. That's right. And, you know, th that was included in... Um the indictment, not just to expose Donald Trump's hypocrisy, it may have had nothing to do with that. It was to demonstrate his perfect understanding of what mm -hmm. the law requires and its fundamental importance. There's no argument available to him that he didn't understand the law. Of course, that's irrelevant because ignorance of the law is no excuse. I mean, if you think it's lawful to rob a bank, if you really need the money badly, that doesn't excuse your robbing the bank. But in any event, he understood perfectly what the law required. So there's no, um, th there's not going to be any successful effort to circumvent the law here by asserting that it was mere negligence or it was just uh, mere carelessness um, in this case. He understood uh, exactly what he was doing. And th that is further demonstrated by his actions when, um, you know, he got his co-defendant and associate to be moving the boxes around like this is some kind of, uh, you know, variation of the game of Clue, where you move things from the ballroom to the bedroom to the bathroom. Um, and it's, uh, you know, a challenge to the government to go ahead and find its own documents. Because remember, all of these documents belong to the American people. Right. Um, and they go right to the heart of American national security. Uh, so, and it's interesting because we talk about moving the documents around, but this is why there's value in reading this indictment, because it wasn't moving around for the sake of moving it around. Things were moved from public, not public, but non-residential areas at Mar-a-Lago to the residential area, ostensibly so that Donald Trump could pick through them, because he didn't want anybody else picking through them. He didn't want anybody else seeing them. So what they eventually returned to the National Archives and the FBI was incomplete. They testified, they certified that it was complete. It wasn't. Then there was an FBI uh, a search of the place where they found more stuff, and we're not even sure they've got all the stuff yet. Yeah, I, look, I think the whole question of motive is certainly interesting from a psychological perspective. From a legal perspective, it doesn't make any difference whether he wanted uh, those files in order to show them off, if he was emotionally um, committed to them, as perhaps it was with the uh, Kim Jong-un love letters, as Trump described them, or he wanted to sell them, or he wanted to use them in his interactions with foreign leaders. It doesn't make any difference what his motive was. He had the intent to keep them unlawfully. And and from a legal standpoint, that's what matters, that uh, he understood that he did not have lawful possession of them. They had not been declassified, and he was violating the law. And that's all that matters. He may have had different motivations with respect to different documents, um, but he demonstrated his intent not only to take them, but to keep them and to shield them from further government investigation. Congressman, good to see you as always. Thank you for joining us. The Democratic Representative Jamie Raskin of Maryland, the top Democrat on the House Oversight Committee.